Hello everybody, my name is Pluto, as you all know. Uh, as you can see, this is a bit of a different style video. Uh, I present to you a 12 safe states. You can call it a theory task, it's more of a safe state to play through of Everlasting Encore Reds. Let's just get right into this. Uh, this took about 9 hours to make, and yeah, let's just look into it. <laughs> so, I've had a bit of a fascination with this level recently, as you all know, because it's been enjoyable to play and I'm playing a lot so this is a just me going through with a minimal save states so you can see in the top right there's a counter of save states used it's one now so I put a save state here yeah the star is really difficult this attempt is going to be an hour and ten minutes long and you can already see some changes with that red coin there uh, there's 22 red coins in this level there's not a lot of hard ones but the ones that are difficult are really hard <laughs> And really annoying as well. Um, that beginning walk section actually isn't that much harder, honestly. But there are going to be sections that are made significantly harder because of it. So this section is... Act There's like a red here, I don't know why. But yeah. Uh, this star is honestly super doable. I don't know when I'm going to get it, but I'm definitely going to keep on playing this level. As well as other levels in the game. Keep getting better and get those insane red coin stars like in Course 13, Rambi's Reverie which Mui is also doing, and Course 14, and then maybe in the future Tidon in Course 15 after this one. Third red coin right there. This is stuff that you've all seen probably, because a lot of you have likely watched my Everlasting Encore videos, where this is pretty much normal. Like, there's not too many differences, but, you know, things get a little ridiculous after this. So yeah, this is mostly just the same. Going around that slope is a little awkward. <laughs> Uh, this theory task is not optimized for time, it's purely just to demonstrate the viability of the star, which is why I intentionally made this harder on myself by doing this in less save states than normal. The, like, I, like I've said like a million times and it's on the screen, <laughs> uh, this is only in 12 save states right there. So yeah, not a lot of save states for a star like this. <laughs> Alright, sorry, I was just double checking that I was recording. But like I said, nothing too different up until, um, not this part. There's some unique sections to reds, but it's a lot of reclimbs, you know, and that's, you know, troubling. <laughs> but you can get consistent on a lot of this. So we're still in the first save state, I wouldn't say suited. The second save state's coming up soon. Um, yeah. There isn't really a lot to talk about. You all have seen this several times. <laughs> I choked a little bit there. Uh, I save state right here. Yeah. Uh, there's like little gaps because uh, the video editing uh, software I use for this isn't very good. It can only cut at like keyframes, which are every eight seconds. So there's gonna be like every time I save state, there's gonna be like these awkward gaps of nothing. Oh, sorry. I think that was a hiccup. That red coin, like these slopes are pretty much the same. They're not that hard to maneuver around. It's just, it's mostly about just your spacing. Uh, this stuff is not reclimbed, by the way. So like this is the only time you'll see this. Uh, we're gonna be getting into something here coming up. Well, this is just QSOGs. Nothing too special here. Uh, there's a lot of strategies that are used in the star that make it easier. Mostly strategies to skip, uh, two reclimbs, and a lot of really difficult things. A lot of really difficult parts are skipped, but don't make that come off as like there's no hard parts. There's still incredibly difficult parts in the star that can take a while to get once. And you're going to see a lot of them. Uh, this firsty here is the only required firsty that kills you if you miss it. So there you go. That's the one. Uh, here I'm going to get a firsty, but it's not actually necessary. You can just do uh, good wall kicks to land on top of that by, like, you know, wall kicks. Like, it doesn't have to be a second frame because the angle's so sharp. But that's all that is there. Just have a good... Get a firsty and then, you know, have good wall kicks. If you get a firsty, a second one's free. There's going to be another long stretch of, like, nothing new, pretty much. 
<laughs> well, there's gonna be something new, but it's just gonna be really boring. <laughs> a bunch of QSOGs. Um, yeah. That's about it for a little bit. Uh, I'm, I think I've said it before already, but this is not optimized for time. This is purely optimized, just not even optimized at all. It's not optimized for anything. It's just, I guess you could say it's optimized for lowest save states, but, you know, I, I could have done it in less, but I, I just wanted this to come out relatively soonish, and I didn't want to be sitting on it for a while, because I felt like if I sat on this for too long, I wouldn't do it, and I really wanted to do this. Uh, I will likely do this for other levels, by the way, not just this one, because I really want to. This was fun to make. This was a little aggravating, I will say that. I, I did get pretty aggravated while making this, mostly because I died to a lot of really dumb things, and I choked some areas pretty badly, but for the most part, I didn't really make it any easier myself, except one area where I made something slightly easier by safe staying a bit earlier, uh, just because I just got, I got two really bad chokes, I'm like, I, I don't want to do this anymore. All the techniques that you use here are pretty much the same. There's really nothing too new. This is version 1.1.5, which means that there's some nerf things. A lot of nerf things. Things that make this level a lot easier. It's not easy, just easier. <laughs> Because a lot of what was nerfed was firsties, but there's other things that were nerfed, like just general jumps are just a little bit easier. Come up here, there's a red. This is the sixth one, I believe. <laughs> there's really nothing to say about this, just a bunch of QSLGs. <laughs> Like, uh, pretty much just my feelings on the star is just like, it's a fun star, I think. I think I'm, I think I'm gonna enjoy playing this. It's very long, it's longer than Course 11 Reds by 20 minutes. But I think I can handle a star of this length. But it's gonna be a very long grind if I do end up going for this, but I, th I think I will. But I think it's gonna be fun. Uh, and I think I'll probably readjust the route to make it a bit more doable. Because this route is not ideal. This route was pretty much do things as they go, in just like a decent order. And that's what I did, that's like the philosophy I made this with. But it was flawed, the route, and uh, I'll probably, if I make another video like this, I will definitely, I'll definitely shake up the route. I don't know if I'll make a video like this per se, like with this kind of commentary, unless it's like something major. Like if I do this in like four save states, then I'll be like, okay, yeah. <laughs> That's worthy of a commentator just to discuss any strategies and stuff. But for the most part, it's just nothing new. More QSLGs. There's a lot of QSLGs in this level, honestly. I mean, everyone knows that. Everyone knows that this game has a ton of QSLGs. It's honestly disappointing because I feel like without QSLGs, this level would be a lot more interesting. Not just to watch, but to play. And I think more people would at least respect the good things in this level if it just had less of the really boring shit like this. That's just my take, though. I, I really do wish that Rambi stayed off the QSDs and the firsties. The firsties are definitely my least favorite part about this game, and I just hate them. We skip all of them in this level because fuck them. There's the, pretty much the entire structure of this route is structured around one major oversight by Rambi, which will make the level broken, but not completely broken. So you still need to do a lot of things, and it's still incredibly hard, but there there's a lot that's skippable now. And it's pretty, it's nice, because a lot of the things you skip are like, really bad. Like, really fucking bad. You don't skip a lot of things that are just like, super hard, but like, interesting challenges. It's mostly just things that are super hard and super bad. Which I'm very thankful for. I think a lot of the star's integrity is kept with these cheeses. I don't think a lot is lost by doing them. I don't think it's like a... It's a dramatic shift in the star, don't get me wrong. But the essence of the star is still there. Which I like. I always like when cheeses still keep the general essence of the star and don't just break it into something else. Like Night of Doom, a lot of those cheeses are just use the wing cap and do whatever you want. 
There's the first split. Another weird, awkward break because, uh, like I said, the editing software is pretty bad. So this first D is retriable, if you didn't know that. Uh, you just have to go back. Like, normally in a normal attempt, I would pause buffer that first E. Not pause buffer in like the strategy that some people use, like Shine or Sumbro use, where it's like you just slowly pause like in like frame advance by like one frame every time. It's not like that, it's just pausing the same time you do the first E. This red is actually pretty difficult. It's pretty precise to climb the slope, and it gradually pushes you, like, right angle, or, like, left from Mario's perspective. So Mario's, like, constantly sliding off the slope, so you have to both get that red fast and also very carefully. And you noticed, I think if you check the input display, I was holding, like, away from the direction the slope was... I was, like, holding, like, down left or something, because the slope is pushing me right from my perspective. And if I didn't do anything, I would just slide off. So that's a red that looks pretty easy, but it's actually pretty difficult and technical. You know, maneuvering around slopes is never easy. Again, a lot of this is very similar, but getting into the next section, the next split, cage party, as you can see, Things are going to get a lot different, and you're going to see stuff that you've probably never seen before in this level, unless you've watched, like, the theory tasks, or the tasks that normal like, 71X made. Which, you shouldn't watch that, because it's made by normal 71X. Just saying. <laughs> uh. I don't know when the star is going to happen, but if it does, it's probably going to be like in 2022 or 21, I'm not sure. It's not going to happen this year. <laughs> it's fucking December, but you never know, man. Check is when you throw them, push you down into the left, so I have a slight angle here because if I just, he's going to push me down to the left, and if I don't land, because I can't just throw the guy because the ground underneath this entire level except for the very beginning is or even at the very beginning is not a death barrier it's quicksand so if i throw the chuck and i fall off the ledge i'm not gonna just fall off the ledge and land back on i'm gonna down warp into the quicksand so that's why i have to precisely throw the chuck the reason i precisely throw that chuck in the first place is just because if i don't he might have a bad position i haven't tested this by the way but it's just, uh, there's a potential that he'll have a bad position and make coming back there harder. And the chucky throw is not even that hard. So, I just opted to kill him and not have to worry about him becoming an issue later on. This is one of those things that you gotta keep track of. These QSODs are just timing. There's a counting method I do. You can also do pause buffering, just pause buffering until you see the flame come, like, uh, embiggen, I guess. <laughs> That's one strategy. But I just do a counting method because I think it's easier. Towards the beginning of this theory task, I was like, ah, I'm not going to pause buffer too much because pause buffering is boring, but then I realized I, I just don't care. <laughs> I'm mostly making this for myself, uh, but I do think this is probably going to be, like, my, my best video. Time I'm done, but it's very just like raw, uncut, un uncut, just like me talking over some gameplay, which obviously isn't a very high production quality video. But I definitely think it's gonna be the best thing I've made. It's gonna be the video that I'm like proudest to show because it's actually organized. It's something that I think is worth showing people, something that hasn't been done before. I just think something people are gonna enjoy, and I do want to make more commentary videos like this. I want to do a lot of things, but. They're all hard to do. This heave hose is going to get stuck here, and he's actually going to be stuck for the entire duration of the level. <laughs> he never gets unstuck from here, because the heave hose is like, he's trying to go forward, but he can't go forward. Because he, he would go off the ledge. He foes in general have weird mechanics. Especially on slopes. They're very weird on slopes and very often just fall off on a slope. But that's not one of those slopes. But you just get, get them stuck. 
These ball kicks are precise, and they're also pretty difficult. <laughs> the part coming up kind of eats the bitrate a little bit, so sorry if it doesn't look very good. <laughs> I'm streaming at a higher quality, but not a very, not a much higher bitrate, or even a higher bitrate at all, which I think was a mistake. But <laughs> it looked fine in OBS. If the video quality is horrible, I'll just re-record this. <laughs> Wait through this entire thing for another hour. That eyeball is, like, kind of a threat. He'll never kill you if you just play it smart, but... It's better to have him not looking at you, because if he's looking at you, that becomes significantly harder. What's nice is that a lot of the problematic enemies in this are killable. Or just like enemies that pose a threat in the first place. Like that Scuttlebug. He's not really a threat, like you'll never die to him, but he's just kind of annoying because you got to wait a little bit for him. But he's dead now, so you don't have to worry about him. I died to this part twice, by the way. This is like an example of the dumb chokes I face while making this. Also, that was I'm super lucky to survive that. some more QSLGs. I guess I should have split earlier, shouldn't I have? Eh, it doesn't matter too much. The splits aren't really important, I think. They're probably better for a viewer, because you can just skip to the second you want to watch, if you know where the splits are, but it's no biggie. I mean, who wants to skip to watch some QSLGs? I think it's fine to have it like this. So we're going to get into some new stuff here. So uh, this part, you first need to get burned. The reason why you get burned is because when you are in a lava bounce state, Mario has more control like in the air. So I can just like turn around on a dime there. Or not on a dime, but just in general. It's not that there's new stuff here because there's actually a lot of stuff to explain in this section, finally. <laughs> like 15 minutes of doing nothing and now finally I get to explain something. You haven't seen this area in a while, but this area is all about your camera, and you can control this to have a decent camera, it's just difficult, and it's a lot of memorization. There's also this red coin in the cage. This is where Star 1 is, by the way, if you don't recognize this. I think I already said that. So there's some invisible wall kicks here. I've had a pretty consistent setup for getting them, though, which looks like this, and it worked pretty well. I almost died there. <laughs> but then there's this, which is just... Eh. By the way, if I turn the camera like 180 degrees to look at Mario from the right, the camera sucks. It's horrible. So, like, everything about that is just planned out the camera. Just that way it would be... So that way I could look at Mario properly and not have the cage in the way. Because the cage is just a huge threat here. It's just constantly away. And there's... This part coming up is like the ultimate camera gymnastics. It's horrible. Like, it looks cool because of all the camera shit, but learning it and doing it is really horrible, and it's a lot of, like, inputs. <laughs> so I have to go into Mario Cam, so that way Lakitu Cam will work, and then I zoom in the Lakitu Cam, and then I pause buffer, so that way I can react to hitting this wall. And then I land on the tiny little strip from earlier, so I can go in the alcove. It's pretty elaborate, and really difficult to get a hang of because it's like Mario 64 is not the most technical game in the world in terms of inputs and that's just a lot of inputs a complicated string of inputs which is not a thing in this game normally so for someone like me who doesn't have the fastest hands or like the best coordination that was a difficult part to get used to but it's not over yet because there's still more difficult shit <laughs> so this part I took forever trying to figure out a consistent setup, and the best thing I could come up with that, and you can see why, the camera is not good there, and even then the lava is super awkward to climb. I can't, I, going in, I could talk for like five minutes about that section, but it's already done, so I won't. Just know that section gave me a lot of trouble, and finding that setup to make it work consistently took a very long time. <laughs> very difficult to find. 
Then there's this red coin. This red coin I died to quite a bit because it's a bit awkward. It's like this little slope thing which in the middle changes from a downhill slope to an uphill slope. But there's also that heave ho which complicates things. The best strategy I could come up with was just wait for the heave to stop and then you double jump kick into this and then you dive and then you hug the wall. And that gets you back down. So you can jump again. So yeah, that was the best strategy. It's pretty consistent. It's not free, but it's pretty consistent. So that's pretty much the end of the unique stuff. We're kind of back to the same old, same old stuff that you've seen a lot. It's not a bad thing, right? I mean, people like watching the stage, I think. It's a lot of QSLGs, though. I can't lie about that. I feel like this entire time I've been watching a bunch of QSLGs. So, yeah. The save state doesn't end anytime soon, by the way, if my memory serves correctly. <laughs> I, I wanted to make the save states difficult just to reflect like some level of consistency. Because I did want to demonstrate at least some level of consistency with sections, also that was pretty lucky. Getting burned there does kind of pose a problem in the future. Well not really, and I'll explain it when it becomes relevant, but HP management is kind of a thing in this level, but it's very... It's, it's a problem that you can avoid. It's a very avoidable issue if you just play things smartly. Yeah, we actually get that red coin here because <laughs> we need them. You don't normally we do come down here to skip the difficult jumps up top, but that's the only time I like I've never shown getting that red coin. But it's something special. It's at QSOG how you see QSOG into it. You also might have seen a red coin down there. Uh, that red coin that you saw, if you saw it, is the last one we'll get. By the way, so you'll you'll pro I think you see it a couple times, but we don't get it until the very end. As you can see, getting stuck on this arch, it happens to the best of us. And back down. And a check ya, your good friend. Everyone likes a good check ya. This jump, I mean, this is just a setup. This jump is actually pretty difficult, but I've gotten consistent at it just by getting good at this setup, which is like a visual cue, and then you climb up these walls, and then you just hold directions in the analog stick. You can see the the input display to see what I do, and then just straight left there, and then neutral, and then right. It's a consistent setup. Like, it's, it's not free. That's a lot of things in this level, honestly. It's not free, but you can get very good at it. And that's probably why uh, this level is like appealing to me. Cause, like ever since the beginning, it always seemed like so difficult but so reasonable. That's kind of how I feel about Final Tragedy, and even T Dawn. It's just like it's so insanely difficult, but I, I think it's feasible. Whether or not a human will ever do T Dawn or Final Tragedy is yet to be seen. I hope they do, and I hope I'll be the one to do it. But I've said this before, but. Even if I'm like the 5 millionth person to beat Dream Edition, I'm still gonna beat it. If it's possible, because... I love this game, man. I care about this game a lot. I really do. Also, fun fact, the Star 3 path that uh, was in the Star that I got yesterday... You never go on that in Reds. I, you're supposed to, for like a tiny bit. Actually, I don't even think you need to. I don't, I don't think you ever need to go on that path for Reds. It's pretty silly. That save state finally ended after like 8 minutes. <laughs> that was a very long one. So this is the one path that I haven't shown anyone in a save stateless attempt. And I still haven't because I haven't gotten these stars save, list, save stateless. Uh, the four, the, not four, the three stars in this path will all be done in one video because they're like the same star because of cheese. But they're a little different here. So, uh, 
here's where we talk about the fundamental cheese that breaks Everlasting Encore. There's a wing cap in this level. Also, that was super fucked up. I don't know how I lived that. There's a wing cap in this level, and Rambi kind of forgot the number one rule about the wing cap, and that's don't put it in extreme hack levels. Because <laughs> it kind of breaks the level. These lava bounces look kind of tricky, but they're not that bad if you just know how to do them. This one's a little tight because you do need some speed going into this to make it, but there's a one-way wall that pushes you in there, so it's not as tight as it looks. This wing cap part is actually pretty tough because this flying is easy. Like, this flying is easy. It's easier than the treasure... than not the treasure world. The Dream Edition Bowser 3 flying. <laughs> you know, the easier versions level. But that sharp turn at the end is pretty difficult, and if you're not ready for it, it's going to kill you every time, like, without fail. And that's the wing cap cheese right there. Uh, the wing cap is not supposed to last that long. It's not supposed to get you to the metal cap. But the problem is that the wing cap and the metal cap, in fact, only last 20 seconds each. So we don't have as much free reign as we would have in a normal hack. But we can still do stuff with it. The most notable thing is that we can fly, and if we fly properly, we can actually skip the entire QSOG section that is very infamous in this level. And just like that, we've skipped it all. And if you jump down here... That box has the star, by the way. Star 7, QSOGs. And red coin. But that's not the end. There's another red coin in right here. And there's actually going to be a save state coming up right now. These are probably the hardest jumps in the level, but I don't think this was the hardest save state for me coming up, these jumps. So this is the cheese I showed earlier. I had a video earlier, it was like titled like this, this strat might make everlasting hardcore reds possible. And this strategy right here skips so many firsties, like you wouldn't believe it. Because those walls are very far apart. So much so that you need firsties to scale them. So you would need to get a bunch of firsties up that and then across it and then back across. That would not be very feasible. But because of that strategy, no firsties are actually required at all. And because of that, we can come up here, and now we have a very difficult jump that I did twice, because I didn't save state after it. Because <laughs> I didn't want to, I wanted to save state at the firsty, which I'll show you later. So, this is like actually not even a set of two jumps, it's three parts to this. So first off, this arc. This arc is super tight. You need to do it in a pretty specific way, and you need to flick the stick, like, very well. To make this. It's preferred if you get a firsty. You don't need a firsty, by the way. It's mostly just in your flick. Like a really good flick. And there you saw I got out of the arc, but I was too low, so I went back. And this is a very forgiving jump. It's very retriable, which I can't say about the next thing. So this is a lot of just like bonking on the ceiling and just getting cocked over and over. It's very frustrating. But there you go, I made it out. Barely got that. <laughs> that that's a pretty rough quicksand patch. And now these, these precise wall kicks gave me a lot of issues, but I eventually found, like you can look at the, the input display, I eventually found a method that works, we mostly just holding down. And on this attempt, I got so lucky to hit that wall, <laughs> like you wouldn't believe, just straight into thins. Like this is just straight up thins, like this is like TD thins. It's, it's arguably easier, it probably is actually easier, but yeah, just like no remorse, just precise wall kicks, thins right away. It's really rough, and then an arc on top of that. It's brutal. But that's that section. And the safe state doesn't end here. And I actually did die after getting those thins and I had to do them again. Which I don't regret doing. I don't regret doing that. Because it's just more practice, right? And that's why I did that. I did that not just to show the star, but also to practice for it. And I think I succeeded. I think I not only got better at the level, but I think I'm more prepared for reds. I'm not prepared for reds, but I'm more than I was. And I'm definitely ready to go for stars five, 4, 5, and 6. 7, technically. There's also an invisible on that jump. I mention that like every single day I get to that jump, but there's an invisible on it. Which is why I jump so awkwardly, it's to avoid the invisible. Alright, more QSODs. So, uh, if you don't want to watch this, I'd recommend skipping ahead, because this is just a reclimb. Uh, <laughs> just, I'll end the split when the reclimb's over, pretty much, so. 
don't worry about that. Yeah, but this is just like normal stuff. That's the end of the sixth save state. Halfway there! Both fit. This is what kind of in terms of time. But. Mostly in terms of save state tees. So, back at the first tee. Getting across this pretty simply. This is all stuff you've seen before. It's the same. It's the same path. It's just, you know, we're doing it again because reclimbs. I've always found the reclimbs in this game really weird because Treasure World, like notoriously, doesn't have any reclimbs. It's like the one extreme hack that doesn't, outside of the KBRs, but like every other uh, extreme hack has like some form of reclimbs. But Treasure World doesn't. But Dream Edition does, and it's really weird that it does. I feel like it's super out of place. <laughs> I mean, obviously doing reclimbs is an easy way to add difficulties. Add another platform, like, way low in the level, but it's a little frustrating. It's frustrating game design. For sure. So I guess uh, while we're doing this, I should talk about the route a little bit. Uh, in the future, I'll probably switch... I'll probably do the section that's coming up a little bit earlier. And I'll pair it with like something different, just to make this a bit easier on myself. Because there's a reason that's, that split is called Flying Nightmare there, and it's the section that's probably not the hardest, but it's the section that gave me the most issue. By far. I spent like two hours trying to get it. It was very difficult, but it was very gratifying when I got it. It was very satisfying. <laughs> Felt really good. So this is the section. This is why I killed the Chuck Kiss, and I was just not here. You don't have to deal with him. This platform is ice, by the way. This is the only platform in the level that's made of ice, and it makes it that way you have to punch cancel the long jump here. really weird decision. He definitely did that so it'd be a little bit harder. Still a bit weird. As mentioned before, this is just a setup. There's no like like yeah, there's like no real skill to this. It's just the setups, the counting in your heads. You know, when you get here, you wait for the fire to poof, and then it's like, one, two, three, four, there we go. It's all super doable. There's our friend, the Scuttlebug. He doesn't die until way later. I do kill that guy. I do kill that Scuttlebug, but not for a while. <laughs> Sorry, Scuttlebug fans, but you gotta die. Despite all the frustrations I had making this, I definitely had a lot of fun, and I think this is going to be something that people are going to be both impressed by, but also just interested in. And I hope that this video gets at least some notoriety, because it's definitely the video that I'm going to be the proudest of, until I get the star. <laughs> this was a big accomplishment for me, honestly. Because, like, you could joke about, like, oh, you just did it with safety, it's not that hard, but... Doing this in only 12 safe states is difficult, like, these sections are all very hard, even if they're bite-sized sections of a longer star, they're very difficult sections, and even doing, like, one of these is, like, an accomplishment in my eyes. And some of these are really difficult. So there's an example of the heave ho still being stuck from earlier. You can see the red coin in the distance over there, the one that we get last. I always love the sense of scope in this level, how from pretty much every section of the stage you can see a different section. I've always found that really, uh, like, kind of good, good level structure when you can see other parts of the level from different parts of it. Kind of reminds me of Super Mario Sunshine, which is my favorite Mario game, which has that element in it. It's just like, you know... Everything can be seen from anywhere, and it's awesome. It really is sick.
Man, this is a lot of reclimb. <laughs> This song is like, um, I don't know. What do you guys think about the song? I, I always hear very polarizing opinions on it, and for good reason. It's a very odd song, and I think it's one of the weaker ones in the soundtrack. But I feel like my opinion on the song changes a lot. I used to like it, but, well, I used to like it a lot, but now it's just like, I don't know. I like the original version. I think the original version is better than the one used in this, because, you know, the sound font makes the... High, high notes a lot more ear destroying. <laughs> just a unfortunate consequence of Mario 64. Here I chicken out and just drop. <laughs> I didn't expect the Hevo to be so fast. Hevos move after their key turns four times, so very often. I, I like that's ever since I found out that information about Hefos that it takes four clicks of their key to move, I use that like everywhere now, ever since I found out about it. And it's been one of the most like important things I think I found. Cause it's just like reacting to Hefos is super doable, but having more control is just really good to have and it helps keep you calmer, it helps you, you know, just it helps you stay just more calm around Hevos, and I think it's a very valuable piece of information. So, if you didn't know that, Hevos move after four after four key turns. So, I, I think that's very good information to have. Just one of those things that you know is useful. <laughs> Almost got hit by this cuddle bug. Here I actually looked, like, turned the camera back while waiting for the Hevo, because I, I was, like, thinking, like, should I kill that Scuttlebug? But I decided against it. Here I I wasn't trusting the Hevo location. I think in real attempts I probably will kill it, because I don't, I don't see any downside to not killing it. It would make the jump easier, for sure. I think it would be smarter. You can see the red again. Yeah, it really is recurring. You see it a bunch. Just that one red coin. I definitely wonder what was going through Rambi's head when he placed some of these red coins. Because some of these red coins are just diabolical locations. They're just horrible. It really makes you wonder what he was thinking. This level is just really interesting in my opinion. I think it's because I've just spent so much time with it more than any other Dream Edition level. Like at this point I've spent 60 hours in this level. If you combine star temps and then the time it took for me to make this, I've spent like 60 hours in this. Like, That's a lot of time to spend in one stage, you know? And I think that like all that time has just made me appreciate it more. Is it my favorite? Now, it, this is not my favorite level in the game. I'm just going to say that bluntly. But I do appreciate this level more than I think anyone else does. And I don't say that to be, like, pretentious or above anyone. I'm just being honest here. No one really thinks about this level how I do. No one really sees the potential in it. Because no one really... You know, Gion tried, but, you know, we know that he gave up. And, you know, it's no fault of his own. He did not enjoy this level. I enjoy this level. It's not my favorite, but I like it, and I appreciate it, and I think, I don't think this level would be as special to me if everyone else was doing it, and I don't mean that in the sense of like, oh, this is my level, because it's not. This isn't my stage. You know, the whole game is my stage, <laughs> but I think this level is just like the one that everyone kind of knows about, but doesn't really associate with because of so many flaws with it. But I, I, I'm willing to look past those, and I'm willing to give this level the love that I think it deserves. I, I really do. I really do think it deserves more attention and love, because it's one of the most fascinating stages in the entire game, in my opinion. I never talked about this, but the reason I intentionally get hit by that amp, because it stuns the amp, and it also maintains his direction, so that way he won't kill me. 
So there you get a look at the flying nightmare when I bonk. <laughs> yeah, more of this. I likely use these strategies just going fast, because going fast there's pretty easy. Also, I never mentioned, this is an intended firsty, but you can skip it with just a well-placed wall cook. It's pretty tight, but it's not difficult per se. It's just tight and precise. Uh, this triple jump, uh, these lava bounces are a lot more difficult than they look because it's very easy to hit the ceiling there. Uh, just look back and just look at how close you get to hitting the ceiling. It's basically like lava arc, but going like inverse. Also, I don't know why that red coin's there. It's like the most filler red. Alright, so I'm going to explain a glitch right now. Because I'm probably not going to have a lot of time to explain in the future. So there's a mechanic or glitch or just weird oddity of the physics engine in this game that's known as pitch conservation. It's this thing that makes it so that way when Mario exits the wing cap state, he maintains the pitch he had. And what I mean by pitch is the amount, the angle that he was going up or down. So right now, as Mario swan dives, he has like a downwards pitch, but as he rises, he has an upwards pitch. This is conserved into his flight, and that angle is instantly added to his like current angle when he starts a flight. So if I started a flight right now, I would have the angle that Mario uh, had when he ended his last flight. And the reason why this is important is because we can manipulate it to make our flights faster, give us more control. However, if we don't, you know, control it, we can lose a lot of that control that we had. And it can make things more difficult. So it's it's a very important section, and this is probably the most technical wing cap section I've ever done, and one of the hardest steps. This is the hardest wing cap section I've seen, you know? It's not even intentional, but it's incredibly difficult. And it barely works out. You know, I've heard that, you know, TEIC Bowser 3 has a very difficult wing cap section. So I can't compare it to that because I've never uh, played Bowser 3 or even seen it. But this is still really difficult in my opinion. So here I'm going to use this metal cap to get to the other metal cap to start my wing cap flight from a different place. Because normally the red that I'm going for next requires a recline, but with precise flying you can skip it. So we're just going to fly over here. We're gonna land right here. Here I pause buffer because I, uh, I didn't have a good camera there. And now I'm gonna do something to reset my pitch. If I bonk into a wall, it resets Mario's pitch. So I just really quickly triple jump and bonk, and that lets me reset the pitch. So now I have a perfectly even pitch, and it's not gonna affect my flight here because if it's too far down, I can just die into the quicksand or funnier go into the chunkiest hand. And this flying is just precise. I ground pound while going downwards, and that maintains a downwards pitch into this next flight, which gives Mario a burst of speed, and then I cut this corner, I land here, I think I ground pound here, and then I triple jump out, and then I do a swan dive here, a little nose dive, to get speed, and then I come back up, and then as the wing cap ends, I have that momentum, and then I dive there. If I take fall damage there, attempt is over, I'm dead. So I need to make sure that I don't take fall damage there, because there's supposed to be coins there, but you notice that they're displaced, and it's because of a geometry change in an update. So, there's no coins there, I need all the health I can get. So that's why that's why I saved those two reds for later. Because I needed them now to have enough HP to get back up there. Alternatively, you can go to where the reds platform spawns, but that, uh, that that's, you know, that's like a last resort. I'd rather just do this. But that's the end of, like, the super complicated section. That's, like, the most technical thing in this entire star. Pretty much nothing else is like gonna come close to that. And there's this flying section, which is the same one that we've done like three times now. <laughs> you got really close to bonking there, I'm pretty sure. You really don't want to want to run out of wing cap because it's really bad. So here I'm gonna do a bit more flying shenanigans. Uh, I'm gonna pretty much just fly. I'm just gonna do like a like pretty optimal flight. I don't know if it's an optimal per se, but I, I just want to fly in a certain way because I want to have as much height as possible going into this, and I also want to have as much speed. Getting that fifth coin is a great sign. That means you're on pace or on like height track. I don't know. It's to get that red coin for your flight, and then you're gonna swoop in, and you're gonna get you're just you're gonna run out of wing cape here, and you're gonna ledge grab. And that's perfect. Now you're gonna QSG back, and then you're gonna get that red coin. And that's the 19th one. So now we're going to QSOG a little bit. 
Normally, this QSD section spans a very long time, but it's not going to span nearly as long here because instead of QSDing all the way to the end, instead we're just going to drop off to go to a reclimb red coin. By the way, this is like entire section, like the red coin thing that I showed earlier, like the really technical stuff. I'm like, this is probably going to stay where it is in the route, but I'm probably going to move the other part of this section to before like the thins and the precise ball kicks area. That's what I'm tempted to do. I think it's going to be a good change. I think it's going to make grinding the star a little bit easier because it's like, it's not going to be like uh, 40 minutes just to die to the insanely precise flying section. Which is better in my opinion. You can't really do anything about the beginning in this level. It's just a long beginning to get to the difficult stuff. This looks familiar. It's directly based on Treasure World Bowser 3 QSODs, by the way. Like these downward steps. And we land in here. This is the end of the save state. Now it's time for another reclimb. Everyone likes these. This is the second to last one, so yeah. The last one's the longest though. <laughs> uh, I'm just gonna be blunt here, like the rest of the stars mostly reclaims. So if you were here for the unique content, just skip to the end because this is just all reclaims pretty much. <laughs> I'm just gonna be honest here. So, if you're not here for that, don't watch. Or do watch if you wanna. If you're here for the commentary, you know, do watch because I still have more to say. I did mention briefly the HP management part, and uh, you might have noticed that there is mandatory damage in the lava bouncing. Uh, you need to take six damage for two lava bounces, which is why uh, I don't get every coin I see because I want to make sure that no matter what happens, I'll have eight HP going to that section. You can do it with uh, seven, but you, then you only have one HP, and it's very possible that on the wing cap section you get hit by an amp. It only happens once. I've never gotten hit twice. But obviously having only one HP is pretty bad if you're getting hit by amps. Just being realistic here. So that's why generally you want to have 8 HP there. Just that way, worst case scenario happens, you'll be fine. So that's just the only HP management. It's not very complicated. It's just save coins for later. Don't get every coin you see. The coins are super avoidable. There's enemies like the Scuttlebug here. You know, you don't have to kill him. He's just a free three coins. There's not even a lot of areas where you can take damage, period. So, <laughs> yeah. It's pretty doable in terms of the coin management thing. I've always found coin management uh, interesting, just HP management, all that stuff, because I think it adds a layer of just um, understanding to the stage, I guess. Just knowing the stage is good, I think. I think it's fun to watch when someone knows the stage well and they execute all the things in the stage well. I think that makes a more enjoyable experience than someone just aimlessly running around a stage. I've always enjoyed just like competent extreme hack gameplay more than just watching someone play a casual hack. That's not a, like discrediting anyone who only plays casual hacks. I just think that watching high-level gameplay is more fun than watching a casual playthrough, unless it's a casual playthrough of a game I'm very passionate about. And even then, I'm the kind of person who gets frustrated when someone doesn't play the game how I want them to. <laughs> fun fact, I grabbed that troll star once. While doing this task, three tasks. It's not a task at all. It's 100% RDA. I actually did grab that in an attempt too, in a save sealess attempt. While I was going for star one, I think I grabbed it by accident. 
It's really the only troll star that's dangerous. There's not many in this stage. Actually, those might be the only one. <laughs> I can't think of any as outside of those. It's weird. I thought those stages would wait more. Oh no, there's there's more on the start three path. Yeah, I, I felt like I was forgetting something. Those precise wall kicks are really difficult. They're very dependent on your wall kick frames and. Sometimes, if I die to them, I'll call them luck, but they're not luck. It's just 100% just take what you're given, adapt, and you'll get it. Also, looking away from eyeballs makes them not look at you. I genuinely didn't know that for the longest time. I only found out while I was playing the stage, which is why I purposely wait for the eyeball to go by. Okay, just wanted to check that we were still recording. When you have really long stars like this, it's just like, you can kind of think about it as like a speed run almost, like a really good speed run. Like think about it in the context of someone playing, uh, like someone playing Mario 64 120 star. It's like, it's just a lengthy speed run. And not even, it's like 70 star, it's 110, not 140. Also, I used a safe date there, because I was a pansy. <laughs> But yeah, it's just a really long star. 15 minutes in, this is where like my uh, course 11 reds attempt would have ended. But still got 20 minutes more to go. But as I said, it's mostly reclimbs. The reclimbs in this level are very lengthy. Because there's just so much level here. It's a lot. It's a lot of stage. And it's very difficult to get good at. And the reclimbs are definitely what makes the star so hard. Because you could say that the unique jumps are insane. But if the star was just those unique jumps, it wouldn't be that bad. The reclimbs force you to get really good at this level. And I'm not at the skill level where I can do the, the fucking intro four times in a row. I'm just not. But I'm getting there. <laughs> Every day I get better. Every day, I just don't just get better at this level, I get better at the game. I'm constantly improving, and that's what gives me the confidence that I'll get the star. Just the fact that I improve. And I think this is a good representation of that improvement, because in the future, I'll do this in less safe states. And you guys are going to see the progression. And I think it's going to be exciting to watch. Part of why I safe stated a bit early here at the at the end of the beginning, the end of spawn, instead of where red spawns, was because I wanted to show that the wing cap section is not just like... I wanted to show that I could do it if it's not at the beginning of a save state, pretty much. So I save stated earlier so it'd be gameplay before it, so I'm going to show, yeah, I can do this section even if it's not at the very beginning. Which, I don't know who I'm proving myself for, but I, I guess myself. Because that's what I told myself, I'm just like, I know I can do this if it's not at the beginning, but I want to prove that to myself. I don't just want to save it at the same times every time. I want to test myself in different areas. And the whole reason I made this theory test like this was to test myself. I did it because I wanted to challenge myself and show the star. Do two things at once. Two things I want to do at once. And this was challenging. This was very challenging. You know, doing any second round red coin star in 12 save states is pretty difficult. But especially one that's like was thought to be humanly impossible to me in and only 12 safe states even with all the cheese we found even with all the easier strategies it's very difficult it's not easy it's not easy at all and uh i think this is a great accomplishment this is gonna go right in the playlist <laughs> definitely one of the things i'm very proud of i didn't split by the way Oops. I mean, it's no big deal. This is also stuff you've seen before. Oh, 
this, but right now. It doesn't really matter. I was supposed to split when I landed on the red coins platform. I've messed up that ground pound to grab the metal cap a lot, by the way. <laughs> just think that's funny. You can get stuck on that wall, by the way. It didn't happen there. I don't... Does it even happen once? I don't think it happened once. But that corner has, like, weird properties. You can get stuck on the corner. It's actually really good, because it makes it that way you will hit... You're guaranteed to hit the lava without, like, having to hold any weird angle. So, like, if you're on keyboard, the optimal strategy is just go with the corner, because you'll get stuck on it. Just one of those weird things. It's, it's, like, it's broken collision, but it's in your favor for once in this game. I paused buffer there, because I was a scared baby. Here I jumped down for these two coins. Uh, I didn't intentionally save these, but I ended up grabbing them here. You don't need them. It's just nice to have, I guess. It's nice to have insurance. Here we're going to drop down to the lower metal cap again, and we're going to get the last two reclimb reds, but we're going to get them both in one flight, so we're going to essentially do two reclimbs and one reclimb by just skipping one entirely. So that's what the flight would normally look like if you didn't fuck up the camera. But you just go over here. So again, we wait. I actually didn't reset my pitch. That's surprising. Normally I would. But you fly, you head over here. Yeah, I had a really strong pitch, goddamn. Downwards pitch. Ground pound. Oh, I didn't even ground pound. I slid. <laughs> yeah, normally you put a ground pound there, but there I was a little too far down. But it's fine. The bonk doesn't waste that much time. You'll still make it. It's pretty generous, the timer. And the red coin that you've seen like five times in this video, we finally get it as number 22. And there's the star. But you gotta reclimb. <laughs> so just being blunt, the rest of this video is just the last reclimb. There's nothing else to watch. So if you don't want to watch that, don't watch it, man. You don't gotta watch me reclimb for 13 minutes. <laughs> But you can if you want. So, pretty much as in conclusion, my thoughts on the star, it's super doable. I think the star is super doable. There's nothing in the star that I can't get consistent at. There's nothing at the star that you can't get consistent at. There's nothing at the star that your mom can't get consistent at. I'm not saying your mom's going to get Everlasting Encore, but she can. <laughs> that was a joke. But, yeah. The star is super reasonable, and this... Theory task proves it, I think. I think if you can get a star in 12 safe states, you can do it in 10, you can do it in 8, you can do it in 4, you can do it in 2, you can do it in 1, and eventually you can do it without them. You know, this may seem just like an isolated theory task, theory task, but it's ultimately the stepping stones for a much greater accomplishment in the future. And I think you guys are going to appreciate when that happens. And I'm going to be very happy with myself when I do. Because it's going to happen. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. It's so reasonable. It really is. As much as it seems so far off, it's just like... You can do it. I And I know I can do it. You know, sometimes it's just like... <laughs> it's very cliche, but I, I, I feel like just believing that you can do something is enough to be able to do it sometimes. I think a lot of people have really bad mentalities when it comes to difficult things and it inhibits their ability to do better. A lot of people get into the mentality that I deserve it, I shouldn't be making these mistakes. But everyone has off days and everyone just makes dumb mistakes, you know? And a lot of levels are very prone to mistakes. And people get nervous. People fuck up easy things. People choke. And everyone makes the same mistakes but it doesn't make you a bad player it doesn't mean you can't get anything you know anyone has the potential to do their own stars and your star your challenge is not gonna be everlasting on core reds it's probably not even gonna be Mario 64 related but you know if there's something you're struggling on just like put it in your head that you can because if you start telling yourself you can't it becomes a lot harder to do and that's not just a Mario 64 thing for me. 
This has been like pervasive throughout my entire life. Just like you have to have faith in yourself sometimes. And uh, I feel like a year or two from now, I'm gonna be saying the same thing. Under everlasting encore's star, final star, reds. And I'm gonna be happy that I stuck with it. I'm gonna be happy that I overcame it, and I'm gonna be happy that I said that I could. Hitting the one hour mark. Very satisfying. By the way, uh, the new input display, I like it a lot. I'll probably use it from now on. I think it looks very good. It's very pixelated, this video, but it's fine. This video is 360p, but I'm recording at 720p right now. Also, this is the last save state. And it's the same thing you've seen a billion times. First D to the end. <laughs> yeah. It is a lot of reclaims. And you know what? It sucks that it's so many reclaims, but... What are you gonna do about it, man? You can't do anything. You can't change Rambi's mind and just be like, stop stop with the reclines. And, you know, I hope one day I'll get to, like... I hope that one day I'll, you know, convince... Someone will convince Rambi to remove the first D's in Bowser 2, Course 12, Course 14, Course 15 if it has any. Just remove those first D's. Because I disagree with the firsties, and I think they take away a lot from the good stuff. One of the saddest cases in this game is Course 13. Course 13 is an excellent stage. Is it a great designed one? Not exactly, but it has a lot there. There's a lot of merit to the stage. There's a lot of sick things in the stage, and there's a lot of things that I think people would love. But so many people get caught up on the, the beginning's invisible, the 30 second beginning at the beginning of a level that players rarely die to catches people up so hard and it prevents them from seeing the great in the stage and that's how i feel about a course like course 14 you know course 14 is a level that i would argue is actually well designed if you exclude the reclimbs and the firsties which are just something that holds back the level and it's really sad to see because the level has so many unique jumps unique situations, just unique everything. It's And it's a fun level, it's a cool aesthetic, and it's an enjoyable experience to play and watch, but it's held back by those things, those reclaims and those firsties. And it's disappointing, because it's, it's pervasive throughout the whole game. This game is my favorite ROM hack. It has so many cool things, and a lot of it's held back by dumb things. And it, it circles back to just like, nobody else sees the, the merit Nobody else sees the potential. Nobody else sees this game like I do. And I want to push this game to its limits. I really do. Because that's just what matters to me. I think I think it's going to be uh I'm going to be satisfied when I'm done with this game. Cuz I was the one to push it to its limits. If not, when I'm done with it, now, I'm, like, every day, not every day, every week or so, <laughs> I just push this game more and more, and the star count's getting higher, it's 161 now, but it's just nice, you know? It's nice to push a game more than other people do, because it shows that, you know, there's something that you care about that other people don't, and... You know, it's just nice to have something that's special to you. Something that's like, you know, just something that's you. You know, I, I kind of identify now as just like the Dream Edition guy. The guy who just constantly plays Dream Edition. The guy who constantly talks about Dream Edition. But I have a real passion for this game. And I love it. It's, it's important to me. It really is. And this level's important, just like they all are. Every level in this game is important, especially the second run ones. And this one's no different. This level is like every other level, but it's the first one that we're looking at super hard, and it's going to be fun when it's over. And we're going to do the same thing for T-Dawn, and we're going to do the same thing for Final Tragedy. And we're going to enjoy it. We're going to have a lot of fun.
You know, six out of seven everlasting encore is gonna be my greatest achievement in this game. But we'll get seven out of seven. It's gonna be even better. Uh, also, on a lighter note, why am I not doing anything? The reason is because I had a BRB. And unfortunately, the attempt that BRB'd was the one that got it. <laughs> Very dumb. But this safe state only took like three attempts anyways, so I can't be too mad, because like... <laughs> it's like a trade-off, you know, you have to BRB in the middle of a section in, in uh, exchange for you get in like three attempts. Which is good, first E to the end is really fucking good. It's not easy at all. You know, I was lucky to do it in 12 tries when I went for star three. Actually less, because I did it twice, but I choked once. Last little precise walk is last time you gotta do those. I think if I get past this, I'll probably get the star. Like, if I get an hour and five minutes in here, and I get past that, I'm pretty good. <laughs> you know, I might choke. It's it's 100% a possibility, but I think it's more likely I get the star at this point than I don't. Because uh, I've just gotten good at this. Bam. We're at the home stretch. It's almost done. Hope you guys are excited. You also notice we have 95 coins. I will end this with 100 coins, exactly, because I wanted to. I guess it would make some more sense in this game to end with 120 coins. This level has like 100, like 200 coins, 210 or something. But 100 is a more round number than 120. This game only has 120 coin stars because Rambi is ridiculous. But this level doesn't have one because it's a secret stage. Specifically, it replaces Secret Aquarium. The amps in this level are actually pretty non-intrusive, which is good because if you don't know, when you activate an amp for the second time, it will have a hitbox as soon as it spawns. But if you're activating it for the first time, it only gets a hitbox when it starts moving. So pretty much when you first activate an amp, it's easier to deal with than every other time. Which is a really weird property. I don't know why it's like that. I'm guessing it's just weird flag stuff. But it's really f annoying when it happens. Because it's really disruptive. And it affects, you know, stages of reclimbs more. Because, you know, if they have homing amps, those amps are guaranteed to have those kinds of properties. Here, I, I think I actually look up a little bit. I'm not sure if I do or not. I think I do, just because I wanted to, but I just look up and see the star spawn, because it, it's pretty. Yeah, right there I did. I zoomed in the camera to look at it. <laughs> just cool to see at the distance. I like how you can see star 2 from the distance. That's something I love. I was just like, you can see star 2 and you just gotta climb up a little bit more and you got it. I love that. You know, it ties back into what I said earlier, you know, I love when levels where you can see other parts of levels from other parts of the stage. It's really fun to just look at. And this level is aesthetically not a masterpiece. It's pretty ugly. <laughs> but, you know, it's cool. It's fun stuff. <laughs> Everyone likes it. No. Not many people like it. <laughs> Oh, my mouse is on the screen, sorry. There you go. Almost done, guys. Almost done. Let's climb in here. This is one of the few sections that's actually recognizable from normal Bowser 3. That hole. If you don't recognize it, then you probably haven't played Digital Bowser 3, but there's a section like that. It's a lot easier, though. It's one of, like, the memorable sections, though. Anyway, last little bit of platforming here before we're done. <laughs> well, this isn't really platforming, it's QCDs. Are QCDs platforming? I don't know. They're lame. <laughs> That's all I know about them. They never come up in vanilla. It's like the pretty cool.
this spin is always nerve wracking, but if you pause buffer, it's not too bad. Pause buffering is very powerful, a good weapon. So here is another example of counting the, the key turns so I can time when to jump. And, God, I'm getting anxious just watching this. <laughs> I'm like so excited just like watching the entire finished work and not have it combust into flames. And we get up here, and the last QSLG, and that's Everlasting Encore Reds. If only it was one second faster, it'd be pen flat. But yeah, that's the star. Uh, I don't save the game here. Yeah, that's the entire star. Uh, I really hope that you enjoyed this. I enjoyed making this, and I will see you all in the next video, which will likely be stars 4 through 6 all in one video. I will see you all uh, in the next video, and I hope you enjoyed this. I really hope you enjoyed this. I worked hard on this. Uh, bye.